Hi everyone, it's Chris. Let's get right into it here. Let's uh, we're going to do dynamic uh, watercolor skies. We're going to have uh, some interesting um, fun here. We're going to actually kind of talk about the uh, practicing uh, before our painting. So, like um, for instance, if you want to do a painting and you're going to there's going to be a lot of sky in it, where you're going to have like a Maybe half your painting is going to be filled with sky or, or, or two-thirds or something like that. Then you have to kind of consider that and say to yourself, how am I going to do this sky? Am I going to paint it just like I'm seeing it if you're out in nature or if you're working from photographs or um, your uh, iPad or any of your electronic um, devices and so forth, your phone, whatever it is you work from to paint and draw. Um, it's just good to kind of think like let's Let's practice it first uh, on some like scrap paper and then once we kind of work out some ideas there first then we can transfer that over into our finished painting let's say. Or you might just like to do a lot of fun small compositions and practice paintings a lot and you really don't do too many um, finished paintings and that's fine too or you just you have more fun just doing some creative type uh, practice things or so forth. So everyone's different. You, I, I guess uh, everyone that's following my channel Everyone has different um, things they like to do with their painting and their watercolor art. So, but uh, I think more often we should try to practice um, a lot, and then I would say maybe I I would say 50% of the time I would be practicing, and then the other 50% of the time I would be trying to create finished paintings. So, and then even if I'm going to do a finished painting, I would try to practice a little bit. So this is what I'm going to kind of do here. So this is some practice paper I have here. And then I also have uh, another piece of paper, which is like a scrap piece of paper, which, so even though I'm doing a practice composition here, I even, I'm just going to have a piece of um, leftover um, uh, watercolor paper that I've already used, so I'm going to use the other side and be, try to be a frugal. And I'm just going to use the typical stuff we always use, a nice watercolor palette. Um, and fresh paints in there, a couple uh, uh, Kalinsky uh, Sable watercolor brushes, some fresh water, and a pencil. And that's really all we need here. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'll, I'll use this scrap paper. So we're thinking dynamic watercolor skies. And this will just be a quick uh, demo here, just, just to kind of loosen things up a little bit. So I'll just put a little bit of tape. So we can say to ourselves, all right, what are the colors we're going to use for our uh, watercolor sky? Let's say in our painting, what are some of the interesting colors we're going to use? Obviously blue, and um, maybe we're going to use a little bit of uh, mineral violet purple color, uh, maybe a little bit of Payne's gray, ivory black. Um, I think I'm going to take a little bit of ivory black on my uh, palette here. And then I think I have uh, Payne's Gray somewhere over here. Let's take a look. Okay, so I put some Payne's Gray and um, ivory black in there. I, I didn't happen to have it in my palette for my mini palette here. So we'll have some of that. And then we'll just say, all right, what colors are we gonna use? So let's have a little fun. We'll just draw out a nice little square here. Or two, a couple squares. And then we'll just kind of have a little bit of fun and we'll say we'll make this sky a little more stormy looking. So we're gonna have some blue, cobalt blue some uh, French ultramarine, French ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, and um, maybe a little bit of um, gold, some uh, raw sienna, and a little bit of uh, mineral violet. <clears throat> so we're going to have French ultramarine blue, mineral violet, and cobalt blue. And then we'll just, we'll go in and just pretend this is going to be our sky. We're going to leave some whites for the clouds. And then maybe over here we're going to use some Payne's Gray for some, some of that darker cloudy looking sky. And we'll add a little bit of 
Um, ivory black to that too. So we can have that interesting, like a, uh, maybe a stormy cloud coming through to the, on the right side here. And we'll go into some, maybe even some cerulean blue. And then we'll maybe make this cloud smaller. So we're going to leave those white paper areas smaller as lower in the sky. So that's one way we can practice um, a, a dynamic watercolor sky is to kind of get the colors out there on the paper. We leave some whites um, for, for the clouds. And this is kind of just like a, an overall feeling of a cloudy sky with some clouds drifting through. And again, we use um, we use some uh, French ultramarine blue, mineral violet, which is purple, cobalt blue, cerulean blue, and then a little bit of uh, Payne's gray and ivory black for this darker section over here, where there's a little bit of a storm cloud. And that, that looks pretty good. And then um, we could also try another, let's say another, we'll use the same colors, we'll mix them together maybe. And a little bit of uh, ivory black up here. Again, maybe some more of that storm cloud feel. A little bit of Payne's Gray. Then on, on this one, let's, let's wet the paper a little bit first. So here now we're going to do a little bit of uh, wet and wet. This might be more of a, um, maybe we won't put clouds in this one. Maybe we'll just leave this all sky and clouds. So it's kind of like an overcast kind of feel. And then maybe we'll use a little bit of that raw sienna towards the bottom here. So in essence, doing a dynamic watercolor sky is essentially work, let's work, work out our colors first a little bit, see what colors we're going to use, and then we can go from there. So here we have a little more of a um, sunny sky with some clouds, and this one here is completely um, overcast with some storm clouds and some stormy kind of... Uh, cool looking uh, clouds with the Payne's gray and ivory black mixed in there and then some blue of course and the rest of the colors we have blue, cerulean blue, cobalt, French ultramarine blue and some mineral violet, purple and if we have a good mixture of colors a good mixture of colors and we just have a little bit of an idea of what type of sky it's going to look like is it going to have some clouds or it's not maybe no clouds at all um, and then that's pretty much how we can work work out our our sky. So if we have a painting we can go now we can go a little larger we can we've practiced this so let's let's do each of these just a little bit larger. So we're going to take these two ideas here we just practice on some scrap paper. Now we're going to have some a uh, little bit better paper here we're going to use uh, and then we're going to draw out and kind of lay out our clouds a little more with the pencil. So now this is helpful just to kind of Maybe we're going to practice and we're going to do this small composition first. And we're just going to like kind of be a little more careful here and we'll, we'll say, all right, let's, let's kind of block out our, so maybe we'll, we'll do a storm cloud up here. We'll make this, a, a, so we'll put a couple lines to say that's going to be our dark uh, storm cloud. And then up here we're going to do some blue and we'll kind of just maybe put some lines over here. Maybe just to help us kind of develop some lines. So maybe the sky, the clouds are kind of drifting this way 
and they're a little bit on an angle. Sometimes you'll notice uh, clouds in the sky. And I often say this um, to students, and uh, it's always a great thing to always, whenever you can, just observe nature. So when you're outside, observe nature, observe skies. So, um, you know, whenever you can, kind of look up at the sky for a couple minutes or so when you're out and you have a little bit of free time and you just look at the clouds and see how they form and the way they look. You know, sometimes clouds in the sky are going to be on angles. Sometimes they're straight across. The clouds drift straight across. Sometimes they're on angles. Depends on where you are um, and the way the uh, winds are, are um, traveling across the sky. So, but when you're watercolor painting, you can create whatever you want to. So, as an artist, you have the freedom to paint your skies any way you like to. And you can also look at nature and photographs and, and use that, too, as some more information that you can put towards the way you're going to make your skies look in your paintings. So here again we did a little bit of pencil work just to kind of lay out some things and then I'll go back in again and we'll we'll go in and we'll do the same thing. We're going to get some, we're going to work, practice on our first example, this one here. French ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, cerulean blue, a little bit of mineral violet. And here you see I'm kind of scrubbing with the brush. This is going to be a darker cloud. So I start off with some blue first, some of those that blue mixture. Then I'm going to go in and get a little bit of the Payne's Gray and Ivory Black. Kind of mix the two. I'm just going to mix it around a little bit. Sometimes I'll just do a little bit of splashing to give it some more texture. can always go into with a, a tissue. Then a, some more cerulean blue and cobalt blue. And I leave a little bit of white paper there. And then we'll do the same thing. We'll cobalt blue. And then I'll just go right in straight into the um, into the palette. Have some, we'll have some fun with this here. We're not gonna, we're not gonna be too, um, too concerned with like being totally accurate. Let's have fun. We'll get some cerulean blue. We'll mix up the colors a little bit, and then once I put the uh, colors onto the paper with more thicker paint, then I can wet the brush a little bit, and then just go in and wet the paper a little bit, and then kind of mix, mix down the paper as we go a little bit. So here we can see we're getting lots of variation. Um, and then up here we can add a little bit of that raw sienna. A little change of color. Looks nice. Looks good. We could always go up here with a little bit of more of the, uh, maybe there's a little bit of a storm cloud up here that's already kind of, it's just up this way a little bit in the corner of the uh, painting.
Alright, now I'm just going to get more some parallel lines. And I'm just going to mix up some more blue, purple. Add some color variation to it. And that's really, that's it. I mean, that's the, kind of like the example we did, the first quick example, like this here. And that's with the clouds in the sky. Some gorgeous clouds, fluffy clouds here and there, and then some storminess up here. And that, that's good enough, and it'll dry and look a lot better. So another thing I always mention, you probably hear me say this all the time, things always look better once they dry. So whenever you're doing your watercolor paintings and it looks a little bit like not so great, let's say, occasionally it's, watercolor is funny that way when you're painting, sometimes the, the colors haven't finished drying yet, or uh, it just, some it looks a lot better once it dries actually. So you'd be surprised once this all dries, it looks a little funny now because we were doing lots of um, scrubbing on the paper here. This paper is not quite a very expensive paper, so sometimes we'll get that little bit of um, pieces of paper kind of um, uh, appearing on the paper a little bit, but that's no problem. Once it dries, it looks fine. And then we're going to go and we're going we're gonna to do our second example of a dynamic watercolor sky. And I'll just tape my paper down so it doesn't move. This is always important. Tape your, uh, tape your paper down with some good artist, artist tape um, when you're working so that it doesn't move on you. That's, that's a really very critical thing when you're doing watercolor painting and drawing. Always have your paper secure. Um, it's really crucial because if you're drawing and the paper slides, your pencil line's going to go off off the page or if you're painting and your painting moves while you're painting that can throw off your um, brush strokes so always try to keep your paintings taped down very important so that they don't move around a lot okay now again we're going to do our second example of a dynamic water watercolor sky this one here is no clouds some storminess some darker colors and let's try this one and we'll do it on this section of the paper this one here we're not going to worry so much, but we could do a little pencil drawing here just to kind of keep us on track. Okay, so we have our rectangle we draw first. And then we could say maybe this is going to be the darker side section of the um, sky and then this will be the lighter section so that we'll make this sort of this corner of the um, this upper left hand corner is going to be more the darker section like our our first um, example here where we just did a quick test run of the colors and then let's try that now this is maybe a sky you would use if you know if you just want a subtle looking sky and you don't really you don't feel you want to add clouds to it or do anything too fancy so this is like a less um, you know, just like a, a less complicated sky. Sometimes you want a really mellow sky in the background according to what you're painting or if you're, you know, again, working from a photograph or uh, if you're working in outdoors. This one here, I'm going to add a little bit of water first. Wet the paper just a little bit here. Let that sit for a few. And again, we're going to use the same colors. We have our um, Payne's Gray and Ivory Black. And we have our French Ultramarine, Cobalt Blue, Cerulean Blue, and a little bit of Mineral Violet. And 
and, and then we'll also use some uh, raw sienna when we get to it. So let's fire in here. This helps to wet the paper first. You can really get a cool effect with the uh, if you wet the paper first. Watercolor always dries lighter. So if it looks a little bit dark, don't worry about it. It's going to get lighter when it dries, usually 50% lighter. Get some raw sienna. And then we'll go into our blue mixtures. French ultramarine, cobalt. And a little bit of mineral violet, some purple. And again, we're going to go with, uh, no, we're, we're not going to put any clouds here. We're, we're going to try to keep this uh, just pretty much overcast. Now, if we go overcast with the sky, I'm probably going to have to... I'm going to have to gray this down up here. That's better. That, that's better. That's what we were... So that's an overcast sky with no clouds. You can, you can see the blue in the sky, but it's got like a cloud cover, cloudiness to it. So it's not quite a full blue sky. So we just mixed the, the two mixtures we have of the Payne's Gray and uh, Ivory Black, and then our blue mixture with a little bit of the um, Mineral Violet. And you get this kind of nice gray look to it. And then as we get closer to the um, ground level, here we'll add some more water. And I'm going to be careful not to, uh, I'm going to try to leave this until it dries a little bit, the uh, this section of the sky, and we'll do our, so that's our raw sienna, and a little bit of the blue from the sky, reflected down into this lower portion of the sky. So this would be all sky we're doing, and I'm being careful to... Uh, Leave that little bit of a line between the sky, uh, between our different sky colors. So what we can do now is here. There's a puddle of water. Easily, we could resolve this by some tissue, and then just take the tissue and lift up a couple times, very lightly. Touching the paper, and then we can work that right into there. And then we can do this just to kind of give us a, a reference point because it kind of looks right now like we're just painting a bunch of paint on the paper. This is a sky. We have this cloudiness up here, darker portion of the sky. Well, let's do some. Uh, some green, some olive green. We'll mix up some interesting. Here again, variety. Olive green, viridian green, sap green, maybe a little cerulean blue. Mix it all up and then we'll do a nice little, as if this is some grass here, some maybe a field. Just so we have a reference point here. So right now, once you add that little bit of green to the bottom, you kind of feel like, all right, yeah, that's the ground. 
And then there's the sky at the horizon and then the upper portion of the sky with some coolness with the darker feel of the clouds up here. So I hope this is helpful. These are some things you can do to get a dynamic watercolor sky for your paintings or just to practice some of these ideas. Again, if you practice something a lot first, when you're in the middle of a painting, it'll just come naturally and you'll be able to kind of draw from your practice practicing. So I, I encourage everybody, please practice uh, doing these different type skies. Cr create some of your own ideas. Um, skies are limitless. There's all different kinds of clouds, cloud formations. Um, you can go online and research uh, Google, like, you know, clouds, cloud formations, and, and so forth, and um, come up with some really cool ideas with just different shaped clouds. And you can keep, a, some, you can keep some of your practice paintings in a folder. Maybe you label it Skies folder. folder. And then uh, you put all your practice skies in that folder. And then when you're going to do a painting, let's say someone wants you to do a painting for them, and it's an outdoor painting with a sky, you just go to that folder, look at your practice uh, compositions, and then you say, oh, I'd like to use this one. I remember how I did it. Looks good. I'm going to use that. So it's just a great thing to do some practicing, get some skies in, and you'll have a fun time with your watercolor skies. We'll talk to everyone soon.